As the world's battle with the coronavirus rages on, one has to wonder what will happen when the smoke clears. Tens of millions of people are already dependent on the UN's World Food Program for meals. If that were to lose funding, all of those people would be threatened with starvation. If we lost our funding, a minimum of 30 million would die. Over a three-month period, that would be 300,000 people dying per day. That's why leaders have got to balance out the COVID response with keeping the economy going, because otherwise a lot more people will die from starvation and economic deterioration than from COVID itself. Even before the pandemic, the world had a serious food crisis on its hands. The World Economic Forum says that over 820 million people were going to bed hungry. Now many organizations are indicating that the situation can get much, much worse. International markets. Under the lockdown, the very supply chains of transnational corporations are breaking apart. Food can't be processed, delivered, or received between countries, within countries, everywhere. For the developing world, that means famine could be just around the corner, especially now that humanitarian relief is also being obstructed by the lockdowns. All right, Shalom, this is Ahara One, Ban Yasha Allah of the Lions Den Camp. I want to say, Kao Halayim, La Yahawa, Ba Hashem Yahawa Shai, Ba Hashem Harakakwadash, Ma'ama. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim, and I go out to my children that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Uh, this is 2nd Ezra 16 and 1. It says, Woe unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. Right? So all these all these nations, including America and China, um, all those nations over there in Asia, um, what you call it, Asia Minor or whatever. Um, <clears throat> then you also have uh, Egypt and Syria. So this is a, a, a destruction coming upon the, what? The whole world. Now it says, uh, gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair and be well your children and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. So that this, this is a destruction, a temptation that's going to come upon the whole world, man. All right. And especially here in America. So uh, like the third world countries like Africa, you know, um, where a lot of these nations are already on the brink of poverty or starvation now it's gotten even worse all right because uh they get their food through what you call the uh, the un the united nations now here in america you have the shipments that slowed down anyway through all the um the tariffs wars that were going on all right and the heavy taxes that trump was putting on import exports and uh and now you have this corona shit. So they're shutting down a lot of shipments that will come in from different countries and be exported. So what's that? The food slowing down, man. Food shortages. And and you still got the collapse, the dollar crash creeping up, man. The Great Depression. All right? Because that's what we're in right now, Great Depression. And when the system finally completely dies out, you're going to have hyperinflation, you know, or the dollar's going to be useless. Just like the wire my republic. So it can go any I believe all of it's gonna happen. But in stage in stages, you know. It says verse two, gird up yourselves with with clothes of sack and hair. <clears throat> Bewail your children and be sorry for your destruction is at hand, man. So all these nations uh in the mirth of the land is what being brought low. All the fun and, and joy that and the pleasures that everybody was into. It's being cut off. All right. It says, uh, and now they have to worry about uh, the children and the uh, the future in this society. All right. But because the destruction is at hand, man. And and within destruction, you have what? Famine. You have wars. You have pestilences. And all of those come from the judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. A sword is sent upon you. And who may turn it back? All right. A fire is sent among you. And who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you. And what is he that may drive them away? All right. Brought this out the other day. I'm going to bring it out again. Second after 16 and 17. Because this is the time we're in, man. Dealing with famine and great death. Uh, second after 16 and 17. 
Woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? All right, no man shall uh, deliver you. The only one that can deliver you from it is Yahweh Shai. All right, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. The beginning of sorrows and great mourning. So that's when, what, the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai going to allow Esau, the devil, to have their last hurrah to try to bring in their new world order. Thus bringing what enlarging their desire as hell and is as death. All right, so he's gonna allow them to have their way a little bit, um, until they go to fill their belly. Now it says the beginning of famine, so the beginning of famine, the beginning of it. All right, and great death because that's what comes with famine, and that's what comes with disease and pestilence. We in the time of the, the pale rider. All right, Revelation 6. It's going to be great death, man. And the Lord gave that power to uh, to Esau right now to destroy the earth, you know, with the sword and with uh, pestilence and with plagues and, uh, and famine. But he's going to be stripped of that power soon. Um, So the beginning of famine, man. And what's famine? All right, this is famine. It says, uh, from old fr French, fami famine, which means fa famine, starvation, um, hunger, starvation, famine, which is of an unknown origin. So basically saying um, to starve, to die of hunger. All right, you got a spiritual famine and you have a physical famine to where... Uh, there's going to be a lack of bread, a lack of food. And the scriptures say that, man, you know, uh, the love of many shall wax cold because of the lack of bread upon the earth and shall be invading one another. People are going to go crazy when there's no food. Them parasites in their body are going to start taking over. People that's been eating pork and all these damn worms in their body. All that shit going to want to eat. And they're going to be like zombies out here, man. People going to eat their children and shit. And eating crazy ass animals in the street. All right, but the same thing is going to happen to these Edomites, you know. And this is a this is a judgment that's, that's going to fall on the wicked in general. Second Ezra was fifteen and fifty five. The reward of thy whoredom, especially America, shall be in thy bosom. Therefore shalt thou receive recompense, like as thou hast done unto my chosen. Say if Yahweh by Shem was shy, even so shall Yahweh do unto thee, and shall deliver thee into mischief. That's crazy, right? So they're gonna be these Edomites are gonna be delivered into mischief. Um thy children shall die of hunger, and thou shalt fall through the sword. Thy cities shall be broken down, and all thine all thine shall perish with the sword in the field. So the Lord has a has a hit list, and these Edomites are on that hit list, and he, these heathens and two thirds of our people. All right, so he's gonna let this famine and hunger fall on them. They that and these Africans uh, that are not of the elect of Israel. They that be in the mountains, all right, where everybody flee to the mountains. You know. Everybody running to these bunkers in the mountains as well. It says, they that be in the mountains shall be shall die of hunger. All right, so they're going to die of their hunger. The Lord going, and that's one of the worst ways to die, is the body eating eating itself. And and eat their own flesh. So they're going to eat their own flesh. They're going to eat their own children, and so on and so on. And drink their own blood. For very hunger of bread and thirst of water. This is Second Ezra 16 and 19. Behold, famine and plagues, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges of amendment. All right, so those are scourges that's going to be sent for correction. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap upon earth that they shall <clears throat> think themselves to be in good case 
And even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine, and great confusion. So he's letting you know that uh, we're in that time to where the famine is, is going to just take hold, man. That's one of the plagues that's being sent. All right. And it's going to show up as a plague. <clears throat> All right. Something that's going to um, hit the whole world, man, or a whole nation. And it's going to bring death. It's not going to return until it's destroyed every person that the Lord has numbered to, for it to destroy. All right. It says, for many of them that dwell upon the earth, many of them. It said, the slain of the Lord shall be many. That dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. So you're going to leave them to perish, man. And the other that escaped the hunger. All right, so we got to escape what's coming. And the only way you're going to escape is if the Lord delivers you from it. All right, he's going to provide a way of escape. And he's going to feed you in a time of famine. Uh, or keep you alive from famine, from death. It says, um, and escape the hunger, shall the sword destroy, man. And you have martial law, you have civil war, and, and all kind of shit that's going to break out um, in those in these times. And um, after after that, you have um, World War Three, Armageddon. <clears throat> Ultimately, the sword being the missile, the destruction. Okay. This is Isaiah 65 and 11. Um, <clears throat> oh, actually 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword. So, so the Lord is going to number two thirds of our people. And he has a hit list. Put you on that number, on that hit list. All right? And he's going to number these people to the sword. He's not going to give the angels charge over them to keep them in all their ways. He's going to number them to what? To be destroyed. And to perish. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. So they're going to bow down um, mentally and spirit, uh, spiritually and physically to this system. They're going to bow down to it, man. Whatever the slaughter is, they're going to bow down and be weak in it and submit to the chip. Behold, uh, because when I called, ye did not answer. See, the Lord called through his prophets. And the uh, two-thirds of our people didn't answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Therefore, thus saith Yahweh power, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. All right, but behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall be shall cry for sorrow of heart, man. It's gonna be sorrow, anguish, until they until they ultimately perish. And shall howl for vexation of spirit. It's gonna rock them to the core. Alright, it's gonna be a lot of crying and lamentation out here, man. Alright, I'm ending with this Psalms 33 and um and 18. Behold the eye of Yahweh is upon them that fear him, man. So he's watching over those that fear him. Upon them that hope in his mercy, man. We're hoping that he's going to have mercy in this, in this coming judgment. We're not hoping that Esau has mercy. We have, we hope that Yahweh has mercy on us. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. To deliver their soul from death, man. All right. To deliver us from dying. To keep you alive in that body. And to keep them alive in famine, so to keep you alive in the midst of a famine. All right, so the Lord knows how to do that. Our, our soul waiteth. So our inner man, you know, our inner being and our spirit is, is waiting for Yahweh. All right, and where we cry out from our spirit and from our soul, our inner man. He is our help and our shield, man. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Job 5 and um, 18. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hand make whole. Not Esau, but the Most High. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. 
He shall deliver thee in six troubles. So we're going we're in the time of that sixth trouble. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee when the missiles hit. All right. Uh, um, or the plagues really start kicking off. The, the Lord is going to what? He's going to keep all these plagues off of you. If you're of the elect, if you want to keep you until the end, preserve you. And if you die in famine or if you die from any of these, the Lord will still um, raise you up when he shows up or bring you with him, you know. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. See that? Even in the famine, not just with the missiles, but in famine, you shall be redeemed from death, man. So you might be on the point, the brink of dying in the famine. But the Lord said he's going to keep you from dying. All right. And that's what you got. You got to look for. The people may think, oh, shit, I can't eat. Damn, I'm getting skinny. My family getting dying off or whatever or getting sick. Is the Lord going to deliver us? Well, you got to hope that he's going to step in. And at the time allotted, he's going to step in and intervene and bring you back from that and keep you. All right. Or keep it from happening to you at all. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death. And in war from the power of the sword, that's spiritual power. So he'll keep the, what's the modern day sword? The guns or knives or even the missile ultimately. All right, it won't have any power over you. So what's that? Spiritual abilities, man. The same thing the disciples had when they were on the scene. The Lord gave them spiritual abilities or like Elijah or um, Elisha. All right. And that's what we're dealing with. That's the times we're coming into where the Lord is going to Exalt his his men. All right. It says, Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction. Yeah, that's what's coming to destruction. And famine. Thou shalt laugh. So the Lord going to make his hopeful elect. His elect uh, laugh at destruction and famine. So that's what we're coming into, man. So when they talk of famine. You should think of. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai intervening and ultimately um, uh, covering and shielding uh, uh, you and your families if you're in this truth and causing you to rejoice in that time instead of be um, uh, in, in anguish. But he'll cause you to be laughing at it, man. All right. It says that at, at, um, at destruction and famine, you know, hunger and lack of food, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth, man. Because what, he gonna, he gonna give you um, uh, spiritual power, man. All right, and cover, cover you as with the shield, giving his angels charge over you. So uh, for the elect, there's not, the hopeful elect, there's nothing to fear, but prepare to rejoice. And for the heathens and two thirds of our people, prepare to uh, perish. And what's coming, man? These, these hunger, um, uh, famines around the world. Widespread poverty, a reliance on imported food, and rising prices are all a recipe for disaster, according to the United Nations. For the millions living in lockdown countries that fit that criteria, food is running out. Across Africa, clashes between hungry people and the police are already taking place. <laughs> Many governments of the developing world are struggling with a terrible dilemma. See their people die from the coronavirus or see them die from starvation. 